all the books. Hey, hey, it's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Farpenses vlog for the Warhammer 4000 gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to book review 164 of this vlog. In this video we're going to be reviewing the novella called Blood Ride written by Rachel Harrison. And now we're one step closer to Christmas and the New Year's Eve. And as you can see I've dressed in red just to represent both the season, that is that this soon is Christmas and also that these stories will be about the Blood Angels. We can begin to talk about the front cover for this novella. On it we see company ancient Darago as he holds the company standard and shoots at an unseen enemy. I love the details and the simplicity of it all. I will give this front cover a 10 out of 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. Once an idyllic imperial shrine world, the planet of Luminata has been corrupted by an ancient and hated foe, its inhabitants driven to madness and butchery by the demagogues of the word bearers. The heretic Astartes have come in force to desecrate the holy world and its most sacred treasure, the chalice of Sanguinius, bequeathed by the people of Luminata by the Primarch's own hand. Such an affront cannot be borne, and Blood Angels Captain Donato and his Archangels descend upon the world, determined to cleanse the stain of the traitors. However, the word bears are not the only threat to the noble warriors, for with each step towards the stronghold of the Dark Apostle Tor Salak, the siren song of the Black Rage grows stronger. Caught in between the blades of the enemy and the flaw of their own blood, only by recovering the chalice and killing the heretics will the angels themselves be saved. So this story switches between the past events that happened on the planet of Luminata and the consequences following that incident. Blood Angels Captain Lacarus Donato are sent in to stop the invasion of the word bearers under leadership of Dark Apostle Tor Salak, as they intend to despoil the shrine Sanguis Gloria and has stolen the chalice left guarded there. Apparently a small garrison of 10 Blood Angels always stand guard at the shrine as it was made by the Primarch himself. The warp fickles with their teleportation and they end up off course. A Terminator squad under Sergeant Victorno fight through the cultists called the Devoted that are a small threat at first. They walk in upon a massacre where the shrine guard of the Militia Gloria was uh, stationed. Among the dead they find one survivor, Shrine Sergeant Talina Uraco. She has wounds but she wants to continue the fight and the Blood Angels seize her spirit. She is allowed to join them but they cannot protect her and they will not slow down for her. She calls them lords, but one of the angels says ranks and names will do. Pointing it out there for the Crimson Fist stories that I recently reviewed. She leads the way but it takes a toll on her and whispers lurk inside her head. They make a plan to reunite with the rest of the surviving brothers of theirs. Company ancient Darago is questioned in the aftermath where the unknown individual asks if he felt either the Red First or the Black Rage. He answers he wouldn't be there if he did. Moving along, the individual says that he has had his concerns with Adicio Sanictus of the group. Back in the past, they come across some another militia man that is nailed to the wall. They help him down, but only for one of the angels to realize that he is one of the devoted cultists. Before either can act, he begins to transform and takes the sword from Oracle and stabs her. It is in fact a demon in disguise. They kill it, but Oracle dies in the process. They decide to head towards the center of it all, but they voice their concerns about Sanctus as the enemy wants him. Moving on, they find the last of the word bearers serving under Dark Apostle Tur Salak. He begins to transform and develop wings and taunts them. It turns into a firefight where Sanctus is at the center, where they try and entice him into the ritual, but the word bearer is killed by Captain Donato before that is the case. What we then get to find out is that Donato was sent in to kill Salak 50 years earlier but failed in that mission, so that it has been haunting him ever since. There is a debate what to do with Sanuctus, but Donato makes the decision to spare him only to fall into a dreamlike scenario where Salak taunts him for past failures. He breaks free and is found by one of their brothers who teleports them out of there. They still must reach something known as the crown. There they will find yet another ritual filled with cultists, and in the middle is Salak. 
A fight erupts and Donato goes in for the kill. Sanicto snaps out of his bloodlust but he is too late to save the chalice. He is visited by a, with a voice that he can only discern belonging to the Primarch Sanguinius. He assures him that the weight should not be put on a chalice or the stone that builds the temples, but the legacy the Blood Angels upholds. As he destroys the last remains of the chalice, its power dissipates. He gets the upper hand and pushes his claws down into Salak. Danata fires the last round into the Dark Apostle's head. We later find out that Sinictus subjected himself to High Chaplain Astaroth for judgment, who explains the usual process when brothers comes before him. They are violent and screams of Sanguinius' death. Sagnictus does neither of those things. He is calm and talked about their father in a different light. He says that this isn't a symptom of either of their flaws. It could either be a dream or a vision, but either way he will live. He ends it by asking how it sounded to hear his voice, and Sagnictus replies, it was perfect. So, what did I think about this novella? Well, so in short, this is a novella about the Blood Angels' first company being sent to a shrine world under the occupation of the word bearers. This focuses on the cursed legacy of the Sanguinius as they try and hold the Black Rage and Red First at bay. I think it had some good varied characters, but to a certain degree a few too many as I couldn't really keep them all apart at all times. But the ones I recognized surely had charming personalities. I think Rachel is, has a good track record when it comes to writing stories, and I've become a small little fan of hers. The story has a framing device as it switches between the present and the aftermath of this battle, and what happened during the purge on the planet. It tightens the excitement of finding out what will happen next in the story. A recurring theme is the choice of, of damnation in this story, that each of the cultists had a choice whether to stay true to the Emperor or fall in with the temptation of the Chaos Gods. Some might not even know that they have done the choice, but nonetheless they did it. The same type of choice can be applied to the Blood Angels, only that they didn't choose their genetic flaws, but when to give in to their inner bloodlust, that's their choice. When will they give in, and how long will they fight on? I think this was a good, exciting novella, with some memorable characters and a good story. I like the framing device of jumping back and forth in time, because Rachel has been very clear on when it, each segment takes place. I highly recommend this novella and I will give it a 8 out of 10 forks and with that I will conclude this book review. Thank you very much for watching this book review. See you around everybody. Bye bye.